Hey, how you guys doing? Um, today I have the pleasure of talking to you guys about a beautiful phono stage, uh, the Chord UE. Uh, at least I, that's how I think you pronounce it. Uh, Chord UE, H-U-E-I. Uh, so this is uh, a phono stage made in the UK. It's both moving magnet, moving coil with uh, quite a uh, lot of settings which we'll go through uh, in the description part of the video and then uh, if you guys already know about this and want my uh, opinion on sound quality and sonic performance you can jump to that in the chapter section below. Uh, so this retails for uh, a little under 1500 1495 USD uh, and uh, a little under 1000 pounds in the UK. Uh, so thanks to my friend again, Rob at No Noise Records and Hi-Fi. Um, if you're in the Toledo area, guys, go give him a visit. If you want to see this piece in action, uh, you will uh, also be able to uh, see other components because he's the dealer for uh, brands like Riga, Spendor, uh, Fine Audio, Proac, um, and a few others. Uh, I'll put up a put up an image that better. Uh, Okay, so here's a phono stage that's both moving magnet, moving coil. Um, there's a lot of uh, reviewers out there that um, I read had issues with the, the color scheming um, of uh, the uh, card UE. Um, and uh, yes, it's not necessarily the most intuitive user interface to uh, change uh, settings for gain and impedance. But once you get the hang of it, I really don't think it's that much of a big deal. Uh, I had no problems navigating through it. But you do need the manual. Uh, but they also provide this little cheat sheet here uh, that tells you uh, what color means what setting. So uh, let's go through some of the flexibility and uh, design of the amplifier and then we'll jump to sound quality. All right. So uh, right up here, uh, this is how it sits on your shelf. But... I wanted to put it up like this so you guys can see uh, the unit a little better. Let me adjust my lighting as well so the lights look a little cooler. Um, and okay, so first up here, right, is your moving magnet and moving coil selection. Uh, blue is for moving coil. Uh, keep it pressed, it switches to moving magnet. Uh, your moving magnet has flexible gain, but the impedance is uh, a constant 47k ohms. A rumble filter here for those that have uh, that are experiencing a lot of flutter and extra extraneous signal movement of low frequency drivers. I did not have that issue, and I kept the rumble filter off, um, but I'm leaving it on because it looks cool. Okay, the next up is gain setting. So here's the flexibility in gain. For moving magnet, it goes up from 21 dB to 42 dB if you're using the RCA outs. And if you're using the XLR balanced, you're going to have a range of 27 dB to 48 dB gain. Uh, for the moving coils, in the RCA, you get 49 dB to 70 dB gain. And then uh, using the balance, you get 55 dB to 76 dB gain. So quite a bit of flexibility there. Um, so here, um, I set it at 70 dB. Um, and I used the um, XLR outs. So uh, this closely matched the Riga Aria that was at 69.5. That's closest. So uh, I figured uh, that'll be close enough for comparison. And here is your setting for um, uh, impedance. Mine required a 100 uh, ohm setting and that was white uh, or uh, gray as it might seem in this sticker here. So, And then um, I used uh, Riga Planar 10 uh, turntable that has the uh, Koetsu Black uh, moving coil with a uh, output of 0.35 millivolts and uh, a recommended loading setting of 100 ohms. So that's that's how I set this up here. Uh, that drove a full tube 
uh, amplifier, Jalita 3502 integrated, tube integrated amplifier, and that in turn drove my uh, high efficiency four pi speakers um, in, in a large room. Uh, back of the unit is quite simple as well. Uh, you have RCA ins uh, and uh, from your turntable and your um, grounding screw and then you have RCA outs and XLR outs and then your core for your AC uh, power supply uh, and then your switch. This switch here is a little hard to access if you have fat fingers but uh, you get used to it. It's, it's not that big of a deal. Sonic impressions uh, and uh, sound quality impressions I had and uh, in comparison to the Riga Aria as well. So uh, guys, I want to uh, talk through some of uh, the major virtues that I see in this um, mid-range quality, um, resolution, extension of frequency extremes, um, and uh, timing and dynamics, okay? So uh, I've used albums to convey this message. Uh, if you're familiar with some of the albums, I think you'll get my drift on what I'm trying to say. Okay, so uh, emergency count buffaloes. This is a Toshiba Japanese pressing, fantastic pressing. Uh, I think it was done with almost no compression and you can really get a sense of the ambience in the venue and the dynamics uh, of the performance as well. So first track here is Yama to Mizu. It starts off with um, these drumsticks clacking and you can hear the body um, of the wooden sticks clacking together so well. It's so well defined uh, and it's got that heft to the sound and there is a very good um, localization of that of those drumsticks in the air uh, and there's good space around uh, the sonic image and, and it's uh, really cool and then after that the horn section the drums and the bass guitar all go at once and there's that slam that hits you yet everything is crystal clear the sound is really well organized front to back side to side uh, space around instruments very well defined uh, and uh, the the track number three in this in this LP uh, is a drum solo and it's called the drum solo it's a short one but it's really an explosive drum solo and here's where you get to hear the nuances and the textures of the bass drum, the thwack of the bass drum, uh, the impact of the snare and the texture and sounds of the snare and the, and the sound of your wooden sticks hitting the hi-hats and the cymbals and the shimmers, the decay and the, and the general sense of the ambience around the recording studio as well. Really fantastic album if you can get a copy uh, I, I love to use this LP as a uh, audition or demo uh, sound for uh, the, the units that I'm uh, reviewing. Okay, so uh, next up, uh, let's talk mid-range. This is Kenny Burrell's uh, God Bless the Child uh, CTI pressing. Um, and um, Be Yourself and Love is the Answer are the first two tracks on side one. Here, Kenny Burrell's guitar has this creamy, golden hue in his, in his tone of the guitar. It's very, really, really special to hear and, and experience. Uh, and there are times where there is crunch as well. And this is not just a, a solo guitar, it's an ensemble. There's an ensemble behind him. And it's very well organized in, in soundstage and, and, and all that. But the mid-range tone from this guitar um, like I was saying, it has this crunch and this detail and the warmth that's in the record. Um, this clearly, this phone stage clearly brings it out. If there's warmth in your uh, uh, record, this will bring it out. It, it won't give you any artificial uh, thing. If the artist intended a certain tone and a sound, 
And if the recording engineer helped do that, you will hear it through this Huey. Um, so let's talk about timing. We get requests, Oscar Peterson Trio. This is an analog productions uh, reissue of a verb recording. And um, so the last track here is called uh, Goodbye JD. And this is, tip this is the typical Oscar Peterson uh, playing really fast with just notes flying all over the place. And if you heard it in a system that uh, is mediocre, when it comes to timing, the song won't make sense. But through the Huey, oh man, the musical message is tight. That's where the timing aspect comes in. Uh, what's, what the artist intended is purely transmitted via the Huey. It's, it's equalized and amplified just right. And you get the groove of the speed and uh, uh, the the... The vibe that is in that song, it is fast paced, it is really enjoyable, uh, superb, superb recording and superb job by this little Huey guy. Let's talk Cafe Blue by Patricia Barber. So uh, here, here the strengths to showcase are uh, vocals, dynamics, soundstage um, and it's fantastic. There's a song called Nardis. And it starts off with uh, Patricia Barber's uh, singing gives you goosebumps. It's so arabesque sounding. Um, and then she plays the piano. The piano sounds weighty, big, like a real piano. The dynamic swing, swings uh, uh, on the keys are so forceful and just have heft. Then the drum solo starts in the middle of the song and it's fantastic. Again, here, uh, the dynamics, the textures, and the splashes and crashes of the cymbal all make so much sense and it's done really, really tight. Superb uh, demo disc, if you want to call it that. And, and this uh, Huey does a fantastic job here as well. So guys, in conclusion, um, they cost the same, the Aria and the Huey but I am a little bit partial to the Huey. Uh, it is quieter, it is more dynamic, it is more extended and it's more detailed uh, than the Aria. The Aria was um, a little lean, I would say, in, uh, in the mid-range. Not so with this. Uh, I don't think this adds any artifacts, but if there is uh, it, it just does mid-range and voices better, in my humble opinion, compared to the Aria. So guys, uh, if you like this video, uh, please like and subscribe and share. Uh, I'd really appreciate that. There's more, more phono stage reviews and more analog reviews to come. Uh, thank you for watching once again. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.